So my question is this. Meta's acquisition of WhatsApp is commonly mentioned as one of the savvier acquisitions of the modern era in tech. And as of 2022, the app had approximately 2 billion users worldwide. That said, I'm not served any ads on WhatsApp. And as of 2016, it became free to download. So what is Meta actually getting out of WhatsApp? P.S. If this is a stupid question or there's a blindingly obvious answer here, please don't tell, don't hesitate to tell me so. I think say don't tell me so. Um, no, I don't <laughs> think it's a dumb question. I think it's a reasonable question. And you know, there's you could make the argument if you want to be sort of a meta hater that it was less, much less compelling than Instagram. Instagram is a billion yeah. dollars, and it's like you know, it's worth probably like a trillion dollars. So that that's, that's like a the Wilt Chamberlain of of tech acquisitions. That and the yeah, YouTube I purchase. Mean, there's this is always one of the ongoing questions what's the greatest tech acquisition of all time facebook instagram is one uh google youtube is one also very high up there uh apple and pa semi is one as far as their processors go i think it's probably one of those first two either you know youtube or or or, or instagram instagram mm -hmm. might take the cake particularly when you consider i mean youtube was only a few billion dollars too uh so those two are are very sort of high on the list uh for sure uh, but whereas WhatsApp, you know, it was $20 billion. I think it was reported at the time as 17 or 18, but because it included stock, it ended up being more. Uh, okay. We'll say $20 billion, which is not the exact number, but it's in the, in the ballpark. And yeah, have they made $20 billion on, on WhatsApp over time? I mean, they're, you know, at the time, WhatsApp had a sort of very ideological sort of founder who, you know, who has since or group of founders who have since got on to like leave Facebook and criticize it. And it's like, well, have you given your money back? Uh, the answer to that is no. <laughs> or <your stock>. yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and so, you know, as part of that, it's like, oh, we're going to keep the monetizing through subscription, but you know, we'll start up for free and then we'll monetize later on. Of course that got dropped because monetizing a social network through a subscription is pretty dumb. Mm. The, the function and value uh, is, a function of how many people are on it. Uh, network effects sort of rule everything. So put attaching a subscription would have never made sense. At the same time, ads don't necessarily make a lot of sense either, right? Like, you know, in this goes back to, I used to talk about in the context of like Twitter versus Instagram, for example. Like Instagram is much more of a sit back, relaxed style. You get an ad, maybe you're mildly annoyed, but whatever, you just scroll through it. Or maybe you right. see you know, your favorite t-shirts, right? And, and, and you, you click through and you get something and just your state of mind is just better suited to advertising. It's a very visual product, which lends itself to sort of ads in contrast to Twitter, where you're super engaged. Uh, it's more text oriented. You're probably kind of irritated as you're reading it. You're just not in the mood to like go shopping. Mm -hmm. And so that's sort of a problem. You take that to WhatsApp and it's arguably even worse. Like you're engaged in conversation. You're like it's not you're seeing random videos that are vaguely in your interest space it's you're talking to your friends or you're talking to your family and in that case an ad is particularly sort of galling and there's a question of like where would you put it like imagine if they inserted ads into a group chat right like how quickly would everyone sort of want to bail right so that's like an open question but the the, the key thing to keep in mind even if you set that aside, even if you live in a world where WhatsApp never monetizes, from the sort of Facebook perspective, having people on inst on one of their properties is better than having people elsewhere, right? So if mm -hmm. you take as a given people are going to group chat, you would rather them group chat on your property than elsewhere. So from that, from just a purely sort of defensive perspective, you know, the amount of money is very much well worth it. So that's sort of number one. Okay. Number two is I think, uh, you know, Facebook's had the luxury, Meta's had the luxury of taking the time to figure out monetization. They've, they've focused on Instagram for several years, and now they can start sort of thinking about WhatsApp, and they can think about WhatsApp in the context of their other businesses. So you have this sort of scenario where you have all this inventory places to show people ads on platforms like particularly Facebook and Instagram are kind of, kind of the two big ones. And then what, what happens from there? Well, one thing that can happen is you can have sort of a direct response sort of ad. You get kicked out to a website or now they're doing like storefronts and things like that within the apps where you can close the loop on conversions. And that's one way you can monetize. But 
there's other ways that that there's other aspects that business might want. So a big one they focus on is click to message. And this is this idea where you can have an ad and you can with a with the tap of a button be communicating with someone as far as you know what's this product or what's the sort of thing that I need help with. Now this is something that I think you don't see a lot of in the West. So this is not something the sort of ads that a lot of people I was listening to this it was monetized more internationally than it is in the United States. Yeah. So one of the things and this is so one of the things is sort of in Asia in general is there has long been this entire sort of e-commerce area stream. And some of it is be being moved to the West a little bit, like, for example, the sort of like uh, influencer marketing. But in this case, it's less like influencers, like, you know, just more sort of brand marketing. Oh, look at this fancy hotel I'm at or whatever. And more literally them holding this stuff up and look at this thing. This is very cool. You should buy. And then there's like a link or whatever. And there's been, you know, one of the things that led to, you know, certain aspects of Facebook groups and, and shops and things like that was there were these there are these groups that would form for buying stuff and people, you know, and, and you, like this whole emerged sort of completely organically. It wasn't really supported in the product. And so this sort of aspect of this more community, you know, social sort of e-commerce bit has really been a thing sort of in Asia in, in a long time. And this sort of like buy, you know, respond to this message, someone lists something and you respond in the comments, then you have a direct communication and you order it, you give your information in XYZ, you might be kicked out to an external payment provider. All this stuff was happening organically without any sort of tools. And, you know, one of the things that makes this work is, uh, you know, there's infrastructure capabilities of like a one person be able to serve a relatively small area or a small group of influencers due to density. There's a function of cost of labor where if you have someone to answer inquiries, you, that can be a better conversion channel than just going to a website and having to click through, but you have to pay for the person that answers those in inquiries. And so you've seen a lot of these click to message ads get more traction in places. I think they've said it's, it's pretty big in Thailand, for example. I think it's a pretty much more of a big thing in India. And you have these markets where the cost of labor is much lower and you could sustainably do activities like this where it's actually worth it to the to the business to get people into a text conversation and then convert. And so you build in tools into WhatsApp to have some sort of conversion, to have linkages to e-commerce setups to ship the stuff and the logistics and all these sorts of things. And okay. I think that's, and by all accounts, it's progressing pretty well. They made a comment, I think it's been maybe a, more than a year, but like a, something about like a $10 billion run rate in these sort of sorts of areas of doing these click to message ads. Again, none of this is happening in the West where your, your monetization potential is way higher. And so, but it's been building up sort of in, 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 you know, in Asia in particular. Mm -hmm. What's really interesting about this angle is if the limiting factor, if there is evidence that this works really well, it converts pretty effectively. People like this sort of angle of buying, but the limitation is labor. Boy, it might be interesting if there was a technology on the horizon <laughs> that significantly reduces labor costs, particularly in terms of text conversations. Mm -hmm. And so you look at this world of AI and these LMs and this potential of of having, you know, answering a user's questions, making them feel good about this sort of purchase or whatever it might be, getting their details, doing this in the context of having uh, an, an AI sort of take care of that as far as the text of conversation goes. And suddenly having an application that is predicated on, have, on having these direct connections that's hooked into the meta sort of graph. They know who you, you know, they know who you are. They probably have your payment information on hand. They have sort of all these other details about the end user. Suddenly this channel becomes that much more intriguing and you have this closed loop. You have the ad shown on Facebook or Instagram you know who saw the ad. You can tie that directly to the sort of conversation that happens. If the conversion is happening within WhatsApp or within Facebook Messenger or Instagram messaging, you know the conversion and you can, you can have a very compelling ad product where you can extract a large amount of value from the seller because the conversion rate is so effective and it's so high and it's mm -hmm. scalable because AI sort of helps take care of it. So I think like if you zoom out, that's one of the more compelling angles and it's more whatsapp as if you think the traditional marketing funnel at the top of the funnel you do, you have awareness then you have sort of get information then you have conversion i think the concept 
at least theoretically, is you have great top of funnel aspects with Instagram and uh, and Facebook, and WhatsApp is a great way or messaging products to move people down to conversion and then close that loop. 